Lord Buddha. He was born 2,500 years ago into a royal family in northern India. He was to be the greatest man on earth, and no one was in comparison to him on earth, heaven, or in hell. And he was honored by the, by the wisest, best, and most beautiful. He was the teacher of Nirvana and the Lord. His father, the king Siddhartha, was still pondering on the strange dream his wife Maya, queen, had before the birth of his son, which was a star from heaven, splendid, six radiant color, rosy pearl, whereupon turned to an elephant with six tusks, and the color of milky white entered her womb upon the right. The wise men determined the meaning of his wife's strange dream. They said, the dream is good. The queen shall bear a boy, a holy child of wondrous wisdom and beauty, who shall deliver either men of ignorance, or if he deigns to rule the world, he will become king of kings, but he will not do both. Queen Maya received signs from heaven, telling her that her son was special. Nature told her in many ways. Trees bowed down before her. Flowers sprang up around her. In a haze of nature's springtime beauty, on her way to see her parents, she gave birth effortlessly under a sal tree in the park of Mumbini. In this wise, Holy Buddha was born. It was a blessed birth. The princely baby had 32 marks on his little body. On the sole of each of the baby's feet and on the palm of each hand was the impression of a thousand foot wheel. The soles of his little feet were as smooth and level as the breast of a tortoise's shell, so that his feet were always firmly planted. His baby cried with melodious, like that of an ancient songbird, flowing without any effort, or like that of a Brahma. And whoever hears such a voice is temporarily relieved of his or her worries. and love's dropped honey from thy royal root a heavenly lotus springs Ah, oh, happy, happy house. house thank you for your kind words what shall we name him you may call him Siddhartha it means all prospering Siddhartha Siddhartha I like it but sire beware but the prince must be protected from all evil threats if he is to become the king of all kings. Or he will forsake the world and become a holy man. A massive wall I built, and in the walls, a gate with present forty doors bolted and bad, which fought to roll back on the hinges after hundred arms. And over each set, a faithful watch, suffer no man within those walls. No mention should be made of death, age, sorrow, or pain, or sickness. Hello. 
heaven, countless neighbors worshipped her, wait on her, and attend on that, mo the, that radiant mother head. The motherless prince was nursed by his aunt, Princess Mahaprajapati Gordani. When he was eight years old, his father, the king, engaged the wives of teachers, Vishwamitra, the most learned of all in sculptures. Under this wise teacher, the prince became a young, handsome man, mastering all the skills of printed master to become the most eligible bachelor in all India. Then came the shoulder, the king, the daughter of King Sukhavada, a radiant girl, a form of heavenly mold. She was so beautiful that one could not describe herself. The handsome prince, 16 years old, was immediately besotted with her looks and charm. The prince lived a happy life, drowsed by three years older. The king then built three stately houses. One of huge square with cedar lining, warm for the winter days. One of veined marbles, cool for the summer heat. And one of burned brick with blue tiled bedet, pleasant at sea time. They were named Ramya, Saramya, and Subba. With all this, the king hoped to shield his son from all knowledge of poverty and death. And so, his daughter lived an artificial life, completely unaware of worries, pain, and especially of death. Then one day, Siddhartha heard a mysterious sound of haunting beauty. At first, he couldn't understand where it was coming from. What was it saying, and what does it mean? 